It was positive, and it's really the close that matters. When you look at the high-low range for the day, we obviously saw that relatively strong close versus that high-low range, and that tends to be indicative of a shakeout. So a shakeout is a shakeout of the weak holders of the market. It always feels as bad as yesterday felt. And I would encourage folks to look back at the S&P 500 chart and look at the April 2nd low, which really felt equally harrowing in terms of its intraday decline and then subsequent recovery. We also saw yesterday a lot of gaps down, especially overseas if you look at, at European stocks. Those gaps down that occur after prolonged down moves tend to be exhaustive in the same way that a gap at the beginning of a move would be more of a breakaway gap. So these exhaustion gaps or the potential for them are somewhat exciting to me as a technician, especially for the fact that the S&P 500 does still have some support nearby. I'm looking at about 2690. That's based on not only previous lows and highs, but also a Fibonacci retracement level to get technical on you and also a couple other measures that we track. I, I figure that, that the old pros might call us soft, though, because if, if you look at all these moves and percentage moves, they're not harrowing. They're, but we feel harrowed, but I, I don't know whether they really are. And they'd say, when I was, you know, back then, you know, well, for, even I do it. 22% down day in 1987. And uh, if we get 3.5%, I mean, really, you should see the nightly news. It's like the, you know, it's like we just averted like Armageddon, and, and I, so I, it's good, I think, because you can, you get more for your, more bang for your buck with smaller moves in terms of wringing out complacency. But these, are you sure we've done enough on the downside? It's they, amazing what the effect has been on sentiment. That's I think what you're alluding yes. to in a way. When you look at the market sentiment having been overly bullish at the end of August and now, of course, overly bearish by some measures, including that fear and greed index that we track, I think that's really compelling. It tells us that the market may be able to keep going, even if to some people it feels overextended. In a way, these pullbacks are constructive because they allow better entries closer to support levels. So I think those pullbacks, which are somewhat orderly at times, this one maybe not as much, they tend to be entry points for most folks that really get you know, that shakeout in place and take advantage of that. So to me, I think it makes it more sustainable, the fact that the pullbacks generate that bearish sentiment, and it suggests that people are underinvested. There's no reason to think that fundamentals and, and the trading in the market should be coincident because that, that totally, uh, you know, that you're not taking into account the, the discounting mechanism of the market. But, this sell-off is occurring during earnings season. And um, that's what I've said. It's like, a, I don't know whether the tail's wagging the dog or vice versa or whether it's just not related because I wouldn't, some people want to characterize this as bad earnings or as, as corporate America not doing well. And the market can, can go into a period like this that has nothing to do with, with the, uh, just because it's coincident with earnings season doesn't mean it's related or does it? It, it could be seasonal, right? We know that September and October tend to hold more volatility on average than other months. So it could be seasonal, um, but it could also be regarding the elections. Uh, I, we actually saw the first intermediate term oversold reading intraday yesterday for the S&P 500 since the November 2016 election, which I thought was pretty interesting as we come into the midterm election. Yeah. So there could be any forces at play there. I once heard from someone, and this is not really quantifiable, that... 70% of the move in any given stock is the market and the sector. So it tells you that fundamentals at time aren't going to be as relevant when the market is having these sort of broad-based moves. All those, all those, those fundamentals could be. You get a 3M yesterday or a right. Boeing so today. Those are fundamentals it, for the industry that are moving yeah. in. That's, I, I mean, it, you, that's why we saw Boeing down yesterday, because of fundamentals in the industry that we were hearing from other companies. I think a good one to watch in the near term would be Bank of America, which obviously had a negative reaction and really to most technicians would look like a breakdown. If it snaps back very quickly after it's gapped down, that which I think is probably an exhaustion gap, that would be very telling because it would really affirm to me that it's a shakeout and that one's already seen its reaction to earnings. So that would be one to watch. Okay. Oh, go ahead. I was Mark. just going to say, Katie, assuming that these, you know, we get some kind of a, a better rally here, we, the oversold conditions kind of take hold, the seasonal forces become better, what would you be looking for in particular in the character of any rally from here to know if it might actually have legs? 
I think it has to happen very quickly, for one. It really needs to be somewhat of an immediate reaction to these massive oversold extremes. So it has to happen quickly. And then we also want to see rotation back into the previous leadership sectors. So that would be technology discretionary. I would also add communication services to that. Finally, I would say we need to see a relief rally in the beleaguered areas of the market. We're seeing signs of downside exhaustion for one in home builders and, of course, in emerging markets and European markets, too. So we need to see broad participation on that bounce.